Our next speaker is a multi-award winner herself. She is an innovative leader with 20 years of experience working in the multicultural teams and geographies, including the United States, Europe, the Middle East, India, and Southeast Asia. As an advocate for women in STEM, Reshma actively champions the business benefits of employment and effective inclusion strategy and has been a voice of change for both inside and outside of the organization. She coaches and mentors several young women in universities that encourage them to opt for the STEM careers and minority ethics group to help them advance in their careers. Her name is Reshma Rachamadran, Group Senior Vice President and Hand Transformation for the ADECO Group, creating opportunities in the network world intersection of people and technology. Hi, Reshma, and welcome to the Women Tech Global, Con Global Awards. I'm going to have it on Global Conference. <laughs> okay, in the head. Super, super excited to have you with us today. Thanks so much for joining. Thanks so much, Anna. It's really an honor and a privilege to be here. And I'm hoping that all the viewers are having a wonderful conference so far. I, you have an amazing line of speakers. Thank you so much. And we are glad to have, to have you as part of that lineup. Your slides are live. Over to you and for everyone who is listening to us. So whenever you hear something that does resonate with you, do let us know in the chat. I do appreciate your activity. And uh, also leave your questions for Reshma to be asked at the end of her talk. Fantastic. Thank you so much. So as I said, I'm really excited to be here. I uh, the, the topic is like very well connected with also how I met Anna. Uh, we met last year because both of us were finalists for the um, Women in Tech Trailblazer Award and now went on to win the award, so which was amazing. Uh, and then we connected. So this is really one of those examples of a network world and how do we create opportunities for ourselves in a network world. So this is also where I truly believe that the future of the work belongs, which is an intersection of people and technology. And today I just want to give, throw some light on how do we as individuals create opportunities for us because the whole future is actually going towards being more and more networked. So if I move to the next slide, I just pose this question and feel free to use the chat to tell me your point of view. What is a network world for you? Uh, I've just put some examples here. So imagine an artisan in a rural village using her community center's computer to sell handicrafts. So sitting in some corner in a rural part and, you know, selling handicrafts across the world. Healthcare workers, and this could not have been truer in the world that we are living in with the COVID pandemic, healthcare workers accessing online databases to research recent health advisories. Students, and I'm sure a lot of students are there on the call on, on this conference as well. Students in different countries collaborating on a science or a technology project. Programmers creating customized software for distant clients or even open source softwares. Government procurement officers using the internet to, for purchase and contracts, which means that from one country, you can actually make purchases in another country. A farmer using a wireless handheld device to research market prices. All of these are actually examples of a network world. And we, we have lived in a world, I would say in the past 20 years, where every year, actually, the networking effect is actually only doubling. So what does it actually mean for us as individuals, as individuals, what, what is important for us is also to look at the role of the technology. So we are people, and then how does technology and the intersection of people and technology, how does it help in creating more opportunities? So in terms of just opportunities, and when I say opportunities, it's not just a question of career opportunities in terms of jobs, but also the potential to do more. So if you take examples of Uber, Airbnb, LinkedIn, all of these have actually created uh, uh, more opportunities. And I say LinkedIn um, as an example that is very close to my heart. So 20 years back when I started the career, you know, I had to look in a, in a newspaper where there would be job advertisements and you look at it, the job advertisements, you send a physical, a postal envelope uh, in terms of applying for the job. And then, you know, if you're lucky, you get called. Networking was actually uh, physical networking. So if you knew people uh, across industries, across organizations, across countries, which all becomes very limiting in that sense, uh, this was the only way you could network. 
with LinkedIn, what has actually happened is it creates a platform to actually help us create network for ourselves, thereby actually um, expanding the opportunity. So it's really creating opportunity. Uh, now, in terms of pr promoting efficiency, Amazon is a really good example. Um, eliminating barriers and COVID has actually shown us how eliminating barriers is possible. So the job that I have at the moment, um, I, 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 today I'm in the office, but you know, rarely I need to get into the office. So remote working is possible. And this really creates uh, uh, more opportunities by eliminating the barriers. So imagine sitting and we have like my team, there are people across the world. I have people uh, working out of Asia. I have people working out of the US, out of uh, Czech Republic, out of uh, France, Germany, you know, name it, any country, you name it. There is um, a lot of individuals who are able to actually work on the central team, so to say, but being able to work remote. So technology plays a key role in that sense of being able to connect us, by being able to create opportunities. But as individuals, we need to find that intersection between us as people and technology. So wherever that intersection is, wherever that intersection works for you, that's where you also need to focus on. Now, uh, just in terms of leveraging the disruption. So as I said, you know, there is a lot of disruption that has happened over the past 20 years, which has only got um, amplified uh, because of COVID since last year. There's a lot more of the disruption has caused also, you know, on the positive side, it has also caused, uh, created a lot more of opportunities. So as individuals, how can you take charge in terms of creating that opportunity for you? So I would for me, the first and the foremost thing is lifelong learning. So again, giving a personal example. So I used to work for a large technology company uh, until last year. Um, uh, so I was a head of engineering for ABB. And, you know, last year when COVID hit, for me, it was a question of what do I do next? Do I want to do next? something else, something completely different out of my comfort zone? And this is where lifelong learning kicked in. So I decided to move out of the comfort zone in terms of taking up a opportunity outside of the industry that I was very comfortable in, which was power and energy and hardcore engineering, if I can put it that way. And this is where the learning kicked in. So I had to like, I, when I moved out of the industry, I had to pick up like, you know, put on my student's hat, uh, really start learning the nuances of the staffing. So I'm actually in the staffing industry. So really learn the nuances of the staffing industry, really understand how, you know, people uh, look for employment, how organizations create jobs. So all of this was actually learning. Uh, the second part of it is where we can leverage the disruption is also the flexible working. So as I said, most of my team is across the world. So it's not really binding us with respect to geographical boundaries and saying, you know, if I'm, and I'm based in Zurich, you know, I can only look for a job within Zurich or a career opportunity within Zurich. I can actually look for career opportunities across the world. So if you have interest and if you want to move into something that is completely outside of your uh, comfort zone, something that is completely outside of your skill set, you are willing to learn, but nonetheless, the job is not available in your city. Flexible working is really the way to go. And the last but not the least is the tech skills. Because truly, uh, and this is a question that is always asked to me, you know, what is the one skill that I would recommend anyone to pick up? And this, I would say, is the tech skills. So technology is really where jobs will be created and skills around technology. So there are a lot, lot of skills that we can talk about um, around technology, but nonetheless, the bottom line is that everything else can be added on to it, but technology is really the disruptive factor here. So especially for women who will uh, want to actually uh, progress in the disruptive world that we are in, they will need to be skilled they will need to be mobile. And this is where the flexible working completely comes or kicks in in that sense, and then need to be tech savvy to adapt to leverage to the disruption. Uh, I'm going to pause here and see if you have any questions before I can, uh, before I share some of the personal examples as well. But you know, feel free to use the chat to raise questions. Um, I would really like that we keep it interactive so that it can also help you in terms of how you can find the opportunity between, again, the intersection of people, which is nothing but you as an individual, and uh, technology. So 
So questions? If not, I'm just going to stop the uh, slide sharing, but I'm happy to give you personal examples of how we can actually create or how personally I have also created opportunities for me and for people within the network. But I see Anna is back, so I'm going to hand it over to her. I think there are not yet questions. I think people are very into your talk and they're listening. So you can continue and whenever questions will pop up, we can take them in the audience. So I can join if we see them or we'll inform you. Does this Fantastic. sound good? Fantastic. So I'm actually going to share some personal examples of, uh, uh, you know, how uh, we can create opportunities for ourselves. So I, I have done my basic, uh, I have an uh, engineering uh, degree, I have a master's degree in engineering and I started my career uh, in engineering. I uh, started with one of the large multinationals, so it was a conglomerate, you know, then I decided I wanted to uh, try out consulting because typically in consulting what happens is you have a steep learning curve. So completely out of the, I would say, creating an opportunity for myself with respect to wanting to see different industries. So I worked when I was in consulting, I worked in rail industry, I worked in petrochemicals, I worked um, in petroleum upstream, I was on an off uh, offshore project. So this was really creating an opportunity with respect to what are the different possibilities that is out there and then once it was clear that what are the different possibilities out there i was able to come back to the industry and this is where i started in project management another skill i would say which is very very going to be extremely relevant going forward as well as we move into more of a networked world plus a, a world where you know we are going also more and more into the gig economy, which means that a lot of us are going to be opting for the flexible working, not just with respect to the hours, but with respect to the location, with respect to the months of the year that we are going to work in. So project management or program management is going to be one of those skills that is going to be extremely in high demand. So I moved on to project management and then I came back to engineering product development. And as I said last year, one of the things that I created for myself was an opportunity outside of the 20 years that I spent in power and energy sector to see what else can I create for myself. So this is also where I feel, uh, again, just stressing on the fact that it is really an intersection of people and technology. So how technology has helped me is also all the technical skills that I brought in from my 20 years in uh, power and energy, also in engineering in that sense, I was able to transfer those skills into a completely different industry, which is the staffing industry. So a lot of what we do at the moment is actually mapping the skills of the future to the skills that exist today, seeing the gap and how long does it take for each of us to close those skill gaps. So I take as an example, you know, all of us talk about cloud transformation. So how many of us are into cloud computing or into cloud transformation, uh, uh, specifically the subject matter knowledge? It's very few compared to the need that we have. So if I would map it back to an organization and take any organization, if you map it back to an organization, you can actually see the gap and how long does it take to close the gap. And what we provide as, as an organization, the services that we provide is also to close the gap, which means that uh, if, we, if we follow the mapping, the matching of skills of the future to skills that exist today, to the upskilling and reskilling, which is a bridge, we, which means that we can actually create uh, opportunities for everyone, thereby making the future really work for um, everyone across the world. And at the heart of this is really the technology, because a lot of what we actually uh, uh, support uh, both organizations and individuals with is to leverage the technology to upskill and reskill. So uh, happy again to pause uh, and, and take any questions you may have specifically with respect to creating opportunities for you as an individual uh, rather than organizations or society at large. Thank you so much, Rashma, for this interesting presentation. I do really like the point that you made, make future work for everyone. When we include and empower women to to skill, to upskill themselves, to reskill themselves, to put them in the leadership role, support them, coach them. And I think everyone benefits, the industry, the, the leadership team, the companies, the organization, the world as a whole. So that's, that's to your point that you made about making future work for everyone. 
Thank you so much. And uh, do we have any questions from the audience? Feel free to ask your questions to Reshma. And um, while people are writing their questions, I really just uh, do want to take one step back. I want to say that I do really enjoy your posts on LinkedIn, where you get personal and share the topics, raise awareness about really important topics and the topics that touched me deeply recently. It was about uh, children's care. And then you shared the story how when your child was small, I can relate to that because my daughter is now small. She's two years old and like trying to balance, you know, your career yeah, community that you have, maybe maybe some side hassle, or maybe a part of the organization you are doing mentoring and raising small child. Later on, I'm, I'm not sure if things get easy, but uh, still, I mean, in the beginning, it's very important that we 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 wait up the the different uh, options and see how we can find a solution. Uh, to uh, make that work for us. And sometimes they're imperfect, of course, but I, that's one of the stories that I just want to highlight that it really touched me deeply. So thanks for sharing that. Thanks, Anna. And I see we have a question from Sarah. I'm going to share it with you too, with everyone. So how can we help combat ageism when we consider from a neuroscience perspective how many people process information at different speeds at their age? For example, upskilling may take longer for some cohorts. Thanks. And I think it's a, it's, a, it's a great question, considering that we speak so much about diversity and inclusion in, in several industries and in, you know, in several uh, forms and shapes. One of the things that I feel is every time we talk about diversity and inclusion, the first thing that comes to all our minds is women. So gender parity, gender diversity. But one of the uh, key demographics that we miss in the uh, diversity and inclusion topic is also from an age point of view. So as we, uh, the mortality rate is like decreasing, so as we are all going to live longer, a uh, lot of uh, countries, for example, governments are looking at retirement ages. So if I take uh, Asia, for example, you know, 55, 60 is a retirement age. When you, as you move to the West, um, it's, it's over 65. A lot of countries are actually thinking about having retirement age around 70 because most of us live longer and the pension funds cannot really support that. So from that point of view, I think, Sarah, the question is very relevant. Um, from a neuroscience perspective, and I say this with no uh, insights into research, so I'm not, uh, this is a very technical question, so I'm not very prepared to answer this, but without getting into the research from a neuroscience perspective, I don't think it is so much about how people process the information. I think it's about finding the opportunities that suits them. So as we age and we see that, you know, a 20 year old to a 30 year old uh, to a 40, 50 and then, you know, 60 and beyond, our needs are different. So how do we match opportunities to our needs? So the moment the needs are matched to the opportunities, it's also a question of then how the learning uh, kicks in. So what is the time that it takes? So this is where the neuroscience uh, perspective comes in, in terms of processing of the information and the willingness to process the information. I can tell you like my team, I have a, I have a 62 year old in my team and I have a 67 year old in my team. And I can tell you, I do not see the difference between uh, the performance. But nonetheless, compared to a 26 year old to a 67 year old, the jobs are very different. So I would I would look at it from uh, also from a diversity uh, angle point of view to say, how do we actually match the jobs rather than just look at the um, the age factor in terms of picking up new skills? That's a really good point, Rashma. Thank you for your answer. And thanks for being with us today. Thanks for sharing your presentation, your knowledge, some personal story. Really love that. Make sure to follow Rashma on LinkedIn and stay up to date with the useful thing that she is sharing. And if you'd like also to connect with speakers, you can go to the event section above and to the people tab and search for the person that you'd like to connect to make it easy. I'm sure, Rashma, many people do want to connect with you and maybe even have you, have you as their mentor. <laughs> so thank you thank so you, much. Thank you. Stay with us. <laughs> thank you very much. Bye -bye. And I'm going to follow the conference to the end. Thank you very much. Um, that's great. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.